Hello everybody and welcome back to Animal Crossing City Folk. You might be expecting it to be the early morning. It is not. It is five in the afternoon. Um, I didn't intend to not show up to record, but it just kind of happened because I got busy playing Octopath Traveler and I'm only watering the turnip because I'm pretty sure everything will get watered. I just want to make sure the turnip will get watered. Just going to quickly check over, see if we have anyone new. We do not. Might do some fishing today to start off our day. And there's one thing I want to talk about today. And it's something I love about cartridge-based gaming that the Switch will sadly never get to experience. And that is getting someone else's used cartridge. And seeing the story that's told by that. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, today, in real life, I was given a Pokemon White 2 and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire game cartridges. They belonged to someone who was the tenant of a family member, well, family friend, who got evicted and they didn't come back for their stuff. They were given a week to clean things out and they left this behind, so... Yeah. Well, I loaded them both up. They're both equal progress throughout their respective games. They both, you know, they're both at six badges. They both have the same trainer name, so clearly it was the same person. And the party, like, with Pokemon games, your party will say a lot about you. Whether it, they're nicknamed, how many Pokemon you've caught. This person hadn't caught many Pokemon with either of the games. Which has me thinking that... Well, there was also a Pokemon Black cartridge, but it's going to my oldest brother where I have a physical copy of Pokemon Black already. Makes sense. I kind of want to still see what kind of Pokemon are there. <laughs> I mean, I can. I, I mean, he hasn't even been given it yet, so I, I could still check it. Plus, it might not work. I might have to clean it. Because um, the White 2 cartridge didn't work. Something had gotten spilled on its, uh, its, its connectors, and it just was not, it, it wasn't being read by my 3DS. But, like, from looking at this guy's parties, all the Pokemon were nicknamed, and they were all named more cutesy things, which, whoops, I didn't even realize I had noticed it, so it was too late. And all of his Pokemon, aside from a Camerupt, could be considered cute Pokemon. Which tells me he was just a general nice person. Because that's generally how it works with Pokemon. You don't name things cutesy things if, you know, you're a gruff, like, you know, tough guy kind of thing. But like, the Switch, you'll never get to experience stuff like that. And that is one of my favorite things about cartridge gaming. It's because the saves were always on the cartridge. Instead of on the system itself. Which I find really cool. I'm going to catch these bugs. I think this is just a walking stick. But I still want it. Yep, it's a walking stick. And I don't know if we have this one or not. Lantern fly. Okay, no, we already have that one. Okay. Well, we might as well have to nooks now. Um, do we have the inventory space to be checking for the money rock? No, we really don't. Okay, I'll check after then. Um... But yeah, that, that's something I'm gonna... I, I, I already kind of miss about the Switch. Is that saves are on the Switch itself. Meaning if you buy a used Switch with a bundle of games, you can have that same experience. If that person has played that game... I really need to be checking the morning prices. I really didn't mean to, but I really got caught up in Octopath Traveler. Um... Which I feel like I should talk a bit about it, too. 
Uh, it's kind of a fun game. I will note, it feels lazy. Like, it's hard to explain, but it was released by Square, or at least published by Square. You can't avoid that. It's literally bottom right corner is the big word Square Enix. And the base of the game is it's eight separate main characters, basically. That is your party. They each have their own unique storyline that the rest of the characters may as well not even exist for. Um... And I honestly think the paths would probably be easier if you didn't recruit other people first. Mostly because it would be more experience for the person you're using. And, you know, enemies would come in smaller groups until you, you know, manage to get around to the fourth person's storylines. But by that point, in theory, your first person is going to be so high level it's not going to matter anymore. <laughs> but that's kind of beside the point. A lot of pill bugs. A lot of animals out and around, too. Um, me and my oldest brother have both been playing through. And he's got his very specific party. And is, without outright saying it, trying to say it's the best possible party. And I have made him quite frustrated by two of the characters he uses... I don't like, and I'm only using one of the characters he uses because I have no better option. <laughs> because it's kind of a problem I have with the game of a lot of the characters feel the same. Like, Ophelia and... oh, what is her name? The Dancer. I forget her name. But they have the exact same out-of-combat ability. To have townsfolk follow them around. The dancer does it with M rating. And the cleric does it basically just through asking. They're effectively the same character. Especially where you could actually take Ophelia, the cleric, and give her the dancer sub-job, making her literally just the dancer, but with healing spells. <laughs> like... I, I don't get it. They're very similar, and that's part of what feels lazy about it. Breathe the lead point stay. Okay, I might actually do some stuff then. I know I should probably really head into town, but I'm trying to get it back onto We Go In on Thursdays, and I believe today's Wednesday. Yeah, today's Wednesday. So we'll go to the city tomorrow. Um, I think I might catch some river fish in the rain. But yeah, like, it's not a bad game. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's anywhere close to a bad game. Some parts of it feel badly balanced. Need to listen for that. Um, like, I came across an area that said the danger level was 25. My party is 25 to 28. We couldn't even hurt the first enemy I encountered. But it could really hurt us. Um... So, yeah, that feels like they mislabeled it. It's probably meant to be something like danger level 30, I would guess. Either that, or there's just somewhere to get equipment I, I haven't been to yet that'll give me equipment that is more than good enough to take on these uh, enemies. Who knows? I mean, the game has also been decently difficult so far. But a lot of the bosses have been very disappointing. One case being a boss I just did. Um, I need to listen for this. I thought that was the fifth. Darn it. One of the bosses I just did. 
it was the chapter two boss for Therian. I, I won't say who it is or what it is really, but it is the first time I encountered a locked weakness bar. Now, unlocking his bar was not a problem, and I won't say how it's done in case someone's watching this who wants to play Octopath. Um, as much as the game has been out for a while, you probably, if you want to play it, you've probably already played it. But still, I, I don't want to risk. I don't want to risk that. I don't want to be that jerk. Um, but once it was unlocked, that's around... Ooh, fossil, I think. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. That's around the point where he started going all purple glowy and about to do super attack that I've never had a boss actually get off. Um, like, it gave me far too long to figure out how to unlock his weakness bar. And by the time that had happened, I was more than ready to break his defense and cause him to never be able to do another thing. He would get one turn every two turns. There was literally no way I could have lost that fight. Like, but the thing is, that fight was really long. It felt like, you know, an ordeal, but it wasn't difficult. I, I'd say Octopath, if you're not getting into places where you shouldn't be, is... Along the lines of, like, Skies of Arcadia, where the bosses are really, really, have a really big HP pool, and the fights feel like they're just this massive ordeal, but they're not. They're, literally, they could have cut the boss's HP in half, and you would have still got the same experience. Another example would be the Mario and Luigi games. At least, uh, Partners in Time. I know for a fact they have a lot of... The North American copy has a lot of HP-boosted bosses. It was also the first version, so technically they're not boosted. Everywhere else just had the HP on the bosses taken away. Because really, extra HP on a boss doesn't matter. Unless the boss itself is actually a threat. And if it's actually a threat, you still don't need to give them a lot of HP. Like, think of it this way. If a boss takes you 10 turns to beat, and in those 10 turns, it was no real threat to you, what would be the difference between just leaving it at 10 turns, or doubling its health and turning that fight into a 20 turn fight? There is no point to doing it. It's just kind of bad game design. It's trying to create artificial difficulty. I mean, in my case, um, while fighting this the, this chapter two boss of Therians, I had Alfin using the weakest dust to heal everybody. That's 800 health. That's, for a lot of my party members, not even half their health. That boss was not a threat. And I was only, like, three levels higher than I should have been for the area. And that's only because I ran into a few thief cats, and well, they're called Kates. But, you know, I ran into them, and I got a lot of levels. Hey there, darling. Hey, um, you know that name, the name Darling is kind of a mouthful? I got a great idea for a new nickname. Wanna hear it? Sure. You totally wanna hear it, right? Okay, here goes. S-Love. So, it makes you seem, like, totally grown up and stuff, right? Y yeah, I, I love it. Really? Yay, I knew it! You can call me Jelly, because I'm on a roll and you get... That doesn't make any sense. S-Love, yeah, that sounds great. So I'm gonna call you from now on. Fair enough. I just knocked the snail off the... Okay. But, like... A lot of games, and it's a lot of Square Enix games, at least in North America. I don't know if this would be different in other regions of the world, and it might just be different based on your party compliments. My party might have just been especially good at fighting this boss. I will admit that. There is a fair chance that that is what happened. My party was just exceptionally good at fighting him. I'll probably, you know, in, an up in a later 
episode of Animal Crossing. I'll probably mention it if I ever actually start to run into issues with the main story bosses. I mean, if I start finding secret bosses, which I know there's going to be, and I'm having trouble with them, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, white scallops aren't any good. Um... Because, you know, they're secret bosses. They're meant to be difficult. Some of the areas, as I mentioned, are more difficult than their danger level lets on. And I'm guessing it was, you know, just missed, you know, typo. Based on my experiences. Though I could be wrong. I could have, it could have just wanted me to have sub jobs and I didn't have any at that point. Um, it took me a while to find some of those, and I've only found like three of them so far. So... Yeah. I mean, I might go back to that place and see if I can get through it. But I'm also kind of hesitant to go through little side dungeons, because I went through one. I went through it in its entirety, and at the very end I was met with nothing, not even a boss. It's like, well, okay then, what's the point of this place? So I googled it. There was no point of being there without a certain side quest that sends you there. The boss doesn't appear before then. Like, <sighs> why not block it off, like with all the main quests then? Or just have the boss there anyway? So you can approach the person and be like, Yeah, hey, I kicked the I, I kicked the butt of that boss that you want me to go kill already. Here's the proof. You know, Patapon style, just dig out their head. And just like, here, here's its head. Like, it, it just doesn't... It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a lot of little things about that game that bother me, and I'm gonna step in out of the rain to continue ranting. Um... We might as well listen to the music down here. But like, one of the things that bothers me is how you learn skills. You don't learn them by leveling up. You learn them with job points, which you get at the end of every battle. Meaning you have technically two experience bars. Your experience bar and your job points because you need job points to unlock skills, and it gets exponentially higher the more you unlock. So, for instance, the first skill takes 30 job points, the second takes 100, the third takes, I think, 500, then 1,000, then 3,000, and I don't know what's past the 3,000, because when you're getting 20-some job points at a time, that is a ridiculous amount of job points. I'm sure eventually I'll start getting more, but for now, I'm not getting really any at all. And it never really feels like the characters are getting stronger. They're leveling up, sure, but they're not really getting any stronger. And it just kind of feels... disappointing, really. Like, normally... Think, like, in a Dragon Quest game. You beat up a metal slime, which is the equivalent of the Kate thing that I mentioned earlier. You're gonna be probably learning a skill or two. Because you're gaining, like, three to five levels. In Octopath, you still gain that three to five levels, but you don't learn anything. You just got some levels. You don't even know what went up. You just... You're stronger now, apparently. Even though as you continue to progress, every fight still feels like an HP sponge enemy. Like, every enemy is like that, so you never actually feel like you're getting stronger. This has just turned into an Octopath Traveler review. I should probably end this off before I do, uh, do just a full review of the game before even finishing it. Though at this point I've put like 17 hours into the game, I feel like I'm in a good position to be reviewing it. A few of those hours were just me off making food, so it's probably only closer to like 10 hours, but <laughs> yeah. Plus I spend most of my game time running around stealing from people and inquiring from people and occasionally buying things from people that are just, I have too low of a chance to actually steal. I see, yeah, um, 
I'm going to end things off here. I thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time for more Animal Crossing City Folk. See you all then. <laughs>